China's Commitment to Peaceful Development March 28th, 2014 Part of the Speech at the Korber Foundation, Berlin, Germany Mutual understanding is the foundation of state-to-state -state relations. Deeper mutual understanding will cement and broaden the foundation of our exchanges and cooperation. Thanks to over 30 years of rapid growth through reform and opening up, China's GDP now ranks second in the world. As China continues to grow, some people start to worry. Some take a dark view of China and assume that it will inevitably become a threat as it develops further. They even portray China as being the terrifying Mephisto who will someday suck the soul of the world. Such absurdity couldn't be more ridiculous, yet some people regrettably never tire of preaching it. This shows that prejudice is indeed hard to overcome. A review of human history shows that what keeps people apart are not mountains, rivers, or oceans, but lack of mutual understanding. As Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz once observed, only the sharing of our talents will light the lamp of wisdom. Let me take this opportunity to share with you China's reform and development. Focusing on its commitment to peaceful development. I hope this will help your understanding of our country. Long ago, China made the solemn declaration to the world that it is committed to pursuing peaceful development. It has developed itself by upholding world peace and maintained world peace through development. Pursuing peaceful development is China's response to international concern about the direction it is taking. Moreover, it demonstrates the Chinese people's confidence in and commitment to achieving its development goals. Such confidence and commitment is rooted in the rich heritage of Chinese civilization, in our understanding of conditions for achieving its goals, and in our keen appreciation of the general trend of global development. The Chinese nation is a peace-loving nation, and the most profound pursuit of a nation has its origin in the national character formed through generations. The Chinese nation, with 5,000 years of civilization, has always cherished peace. The pursuit of peace, amity, and harmony is an integral part of the Chinese character, which runs deep in the blood of the Chinese people. This can be evidenced by axioms from ancient China, such as, A warlike state, however big it may be, will eventually perish. Footnote 1 The methods of Sima, Sima Fa, also known as the Marshal's Art of War, is an ancient Chinese book on the art of war and was used as a basic test textbook for martial art training during the Song Dynasty, 960 to 1279. End of footnote 1. Peace is of paramount importance. Seek harmony without uniformity. Footnote 2. See note 11, page 197. End of footnote 2. Replace weapons of war with gifts of jade and silk. Bring prosperity to the nation and security to the people. 
foster friendship with neighbors, and achieve universal peace. These axioms have been passed down from generation to generation. China was long one of the most powerful countries in the world, yet it never engaged in colonialism or aggression. The pursuit of peaceful development represents the peace-loving cultural tradition of the Chinese nation over the past centuries, a tradition that we have inherited and carried forward. China has set the following goals for its future development. By 2020, it will double its 2010 GDP and per capita income of urban and rural residents and realize a moderately prosperous society in all respects. And by the mid-21st century, it will have turned itself into a modern socialist country. Prosperous, strong, democratic, culturally advanced, and harmonious. We refer to this goal as the Chinese dream of the great renewal of the Chinese nation. We will accelerate China's overall prosperity and raise the happiness index for our 1.3 billion Chinese people as long as we are on the right path. Yet it will not be easy to make this happen for every individual. Consider the difference between eight people sharing one meal and 80 or even 800 people sharing the same meal. No matter how big the meal is, the individual share differs dramatically for diners different in number. We are keenly aware that China will remain the world's largest developing country for a long time and that to improve life for its 1.3 billion people calls for strenuous efforts. Two things will enable China to focus on development, a harmonious and stable domestic environment, and a peaceful and stable international environment. History is the best teacher. It faithfully records the journey that every country has gone through and offers guidance for its future development. In the 100 years from the Opium War in 1840 to the founding of the People's Republic in 1949, China was ravaged by wars, turmoil, and foreign aggression. To the average Chinese, it was a period of ordeal too bitter to recall. The war of aggression against China waged by Japanese militarism alone inflicted over 35 million Chinese military and civilian casualties. These atrocities remain fresh in our memory. We Chinese have long held the belief expressed in the maxim, don't do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you. Footnote 3. See note 23. Page 198. China needs peace as much as human beings need air and plants need sunshine. Only by pursuing peaceful development and working together with all other countries to uphold world peace can China realize its goal and make greater contributions to the world as a whole. Dr. Sun Yat-sen, the pioneer of China's democratic revolution, had this to say. The trend of the world is surging forward. Those who follow the trend will prosper, whilst those who go against it will perish. History shows that a country, for its prosperity, must recognize and follow the underlying trend of the changing world. Otherwise, it will be abandoned by history. What is the trend of today's world? The answer is unequivocal. It is the trend of peace, development, cooperation, and mutually beneficial 
progress. China does not subscribe to the outdated logic that a country will invariably seek hegemony when it grows strong. Are colonialism and hegemonism viable today? Absolutely not. They can inevitably lead to a dead end, and those who stick to this beaten track will only hit a stone wall. Peaceful development is the only alternative. That is why China is committed to peaceful development. Facts speak louder than words. Over the past few decades, China has consistently followed an independent foreign policy of peace and made it crystal clear that China's foreign policy is aimed at maintaining world peace and promoting common development. China has stated on numerous occasions that it opposes hegemonism and power politics in all forms does not interfere in the internal affairs of other countries, and will never seek hegemony or expansion. This is our guiding principle for China's political system and for each step we take. Moreover, China will firmly uphold its sovereignty, security, and development interests. No country should expect China to swallow any bitter fruit that undermines its sovereignty, security, or development interests. In short, China's pursuit of peaceful development is not an act of expediency, still less diplomatic rhetoric. Rather, it is the conclusion drawn from an objective assessment of China's history, its present, and future. It showcases confidence in thinking and readiness for practice. As peaceful development benefits both China and the world as a whole, we cannot think of any reason why we should not pursue this approach that has proven so effective. New Model of Major Country Relations Follow the trend of the times and promote global peace and development. March 23rd, 2013. Speech at the Moscow State Institute of International Relations, Moscow, Russia. Distinguished Mr. Anatoly. Vasilievich Torkunov, Rector of the Moscow State Institute of International Relations. The Honorable Olga Golodets, Deputy Prime Minister of the Russian Federation. Dear faculty members and students, I am very pleased to come to the beautiful Moscow State Institute of international relations today and meet so many faculty members and students here. The Moscow State Institute of International Relations is a prestigious school of world renown, boasting an outstanding faculty and distinguished alumni. I wish to express my warm congratulations on the remarkable successes you have achieved in various fields. Russia is a friendly neighbor to China. My current visit to Russia is the first leg of my overseas trip since becoming China's president. It is also my second visit to your beautiful and richly endowed country in three years. Yesterday, I had fruitful talks with President Putin, and together we attended the launch of the Tourism Year of China in Russia. The month of March marks the return of spring, a season of sowing and great renewal. As a popular Chinese saying goes, he who hopes for a good year starts planning in spring. 
China and Russia having take advantage having taken advantage of this season to plow and hoe not only for our bilateral relations but also for peace and development in the world will surely reap a bumper harvest to the benefit of our two peoples and those of other countries dear faculty members and students the institute of international relations as an institution of higher learning specialized in the study of international issues pays close attention to the international landscape and can appreciate especially keenly the enormous changes the world has gone through over the past decades indeed we live in a time of kaleidoscopic changes that make the world constantly different it is a world where peace development cooperation and mutual benefit have become the trend of the times the old colonial system has long since disintegrated and confrontations between blocks as during the cold war have long gone no country or group of countries can dominate world affairs single-handedly it is a world where emerging markets and developing countries in large numbers have embarked on the track of fast development billions of people are moving towards modernization at an accelerating pace multiple growth engines have emerged in regions across the world and the international balance of power continues to evolve in a direction favorable for peace and development it is a world where countries are linked with and dependent on one another at a level never seen before mankind by living in the same global village in the same era where history and reality meet has increasingly emerged as a community of common destiny in which everyone has in himself a little bit of others and it is a world where mankind is beset with numerous difficulties and challenges they range from the continued underlying impact of the international financial crisis an apparent upsurge of all kinds of protectionism incessant regional flashpoints rising he rising hegemonism power politics and neo interventionism to a web of conventional and non-conventional security threats such as the arms race terrorism and cybersecurity upholding world peace and promoting common development remain a long and uphill battle we hope that the world will become a better place we have every reason to believe that it will at the same time we are soberly aware that while the future is bright the path leading to it can be torturous Chernyshevsky once wrote The path of history is not paved like Nevsky Prospect it runs across fields either dusty or muddy and cuts across swamps or forest thickets yet as shown by humanity's progress history always moves forward according to its own laws despite twists and turns and no force can hold back its rolling wheels the tide of the world is surging forward those who submit to it will prosper and those who resist it will perish keeping up with the times one cannot live in the 21st century while thinking in the old fashion lingering in the age of colonial expansion or with the zero sum mentality of the cold war in the face of the profoundly changed international landscape and the objective need for the world to rally together like passengers in the same boat all countries should join hands in building a new model of international relations featuring cooperation and mutual benefit and all peoples should work together to safeguard world peace and promote common development we stand for the sharing of dignity by all countries and peoples in the world all countries irrespective of size 
strength, and wealth are equal. The right of the people to independently choose their development path should be respected. Interference in the internal affairs of other countries opposed, and international fairness and justice maintained. Only the wearer of the shoes knows if they fit or not. Only the people can best tell if the development path they have chosen for their country suits or not. We stand for the sharing of the fruits of development by all countries and peoples. Every country, while pursuing its own development, should actively facilitate the common development of all countries. There cannot be sustainable development in the world when some countries are getting richer and richer while others languish in prolonged poverty and backwardness. Only when all countries achieve common development can there be better worldwide development. Such practices as beggar my neighbor, shifting crises onto others, and feathering one's nest at the expense of others are both immoral and unsustainable. We stand for the sharing of security by all countries and peoples. Countries should make concerted efforts to properly address the issues and challenges they face as challenges often take on global dimensions. There is all the more need for countries to take them on cooperatively, turning pressure into motivation and crises into opportunities. Confronted with complex threats to international security, fighting alone or fighting with a blind faith in the use of force will not get one anywhere. The only solution lies in cooperative, collective, and common security. As the trends of world multipolarity and economic globalization grow, and those of upholding cultural diversity and applying information technology in social life continue to make progress, mankind has never been better blessed with opportunities for taking strides towards peace and development. And mutually beneficial cooperation provides the only practical way to achieve such a goal. The destiny of the world must be left in the hands of the peoples of all countries. Matters that fall within the sovereign rights of a country should be managed only by the government and people of that country and affairs of the world should be addressed by the governments and peoples of all countries through consultation. Herein lies the democratic principle for the handling of international affairs, which should be universally observed. Dear faculty members and students, Last November, the CPC held its 18th National Congress. According to the blueprint it mapped out for the country's development in the near future, China will double its 2010 GDP and per capita income for both urban and rural residents by 2020, complete the building of a moderately prosperous society in all respects when the party celebrates its centenary in 2021 and turn itself into a modern socialist country that is prosperous, strong, democratic, culturally advanced, and harmonious when the PRC marks its centenary in 2049. At the same time, we are soberly aware that as a large developing country with over 1.3 billion people, China will encounter still greater and more testing challenges on the road to progress, which calls for continuous and strenuous efforts on our part if the goals as identified are to be reached. The great renewal of the Chinese nation has become the grandest dream of the Chinese people in modern times. We call it the Chinese dream with prosperity for the country, renewal for the nation, and happiness for the people 
as its fundamental elements. China has always been a peace-loving nation, but it was subjected to a century of untold sufferings as a result of repeated foreign aggression and domestic turmoil. We know too well the value of peace and the need to build the country and improve the people's well-being in a peaceful environment. China is committed to the path of peaceful development, dedicating itself to open, cooperative, and mutually beneficial development, while calling on all countries to follow this path. China always pursues a defense policy that is defensive in nature, not engaging in, in any arms race nor posing a threat, a military threat, to any country. By growing stronger through development, China will bring more opportunities rather than threats to the rest of the world. The Chinese dream which we cherish will not only serve the Chinese people, but benefit people throughout the world. It is heartening to see that each as the, other, each as the other's largest neighbor, China and Russia enjoy a high complementarity in development strategy. Russia has set the goal of reaching or approaching the level of the developed countries by 2020 in terms of per capita GDP and is accelerating its advance in, in material development. We sincerely wish you success in achieving your goals as soon as possible. A strong and prosperous Russia is in the interests of China and conducive to peace and stability in the Asia Pacific and the world at large. The relationship between China and Russia is one of the most important bilateral relationships in the world. It is also the best relationship between major countries. A strong and high-performance relationship like this not only serves the interests of our two countries, but also provides an important safeguard for maintaining the international strategic balance as well as peace and stability in the world. With our consistent efforts over the past 20 years and more, we have established a comprehensive strategic partnership of coordination and a relationship that fully accommodates each other's interests and concerns and delivers tangible benefits to the two peoples. We have resolved historical boundary issues once and for all and signed the Treaty of Good Neighborliness and Friendly Cooperation between the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation, thus laying a solid foundation for the long-term growth of China-Russia relations. At present, both China and Russia are at a crucial stage of national renewal, as their relations have entered a new period characterized by provision of vital mutual development opportunities and serving as primary mutual cooperation partners. To ensure continued growth of China-Russia relations, we need to work still harder in the following areas. First, stay firmly committed to building a forward-looking relationship that China and Russia should live in everlasting amity and never be enemies is the shared aspiration of the two peoples. We need to stand tall and look far, working on our bilateral relations with a holistic approach. President Putin once said, Russia needs a prosperous and stable China, and China needs a strong and successful Russia. I could not agree more. By achieving common development, we will give ever broader space to our comprehensive strategic partnership of coordination and provide positive energy to the international order and global systems in their movement 
towards greater fairness and rationality. China and Russia will forever be good neighbors, good friends, and good partners, taking concrete actions to firmly support each other on respective core interests, on respective development and renewal, on following the development paths suited to our national conditions, and on success in our affairs and endeavors. Second, Stay firmly committed to cultivating a cooperative and mutually beneficial relationship. China and Russia differ in realities and national conditions. By engaging in close cooperation and drawing on each other's strengths to make up for respective shortcomings, we can show to the world that one plus one can be greater than two. Last year, our two-way trade reached U.S. $88.2 billion worth, and there were 3.3 million visits exchanged between our peoples. These figures give full expression to the enormous potential and broad prospects of China-Russia relations. Bilateral cooperation in energy has advanced steadily. The China-Russia oil and gas pipelines have long since replaced the 10,000 Li tea rote of the 17th century as the new arteries of the century connecting the two countries. Footnote 1. The 10,000 Li tea route was a tea trading route stretching 13,000 kilometers through more than 200 cities. Opened by Shanxi businessmen from the late Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644, to the early Qing Dynasty, 1644 to 1911, it started from Mi Kun Village at the foot of the Wu Yi Mountain in Fujian Province in southeast China. Reached Kayahatka in Russia, and from there to St. Petersburg. It was an important route for international trade, enjoying equal fame with the Silk Road. End of footnote one. Right now, we are looking actively to bridge the development strategies of our respective countries and regions in an effort to create still more converging interests and growth areas in bilateral, bilateral cooperation. We will expand the scope of bilateral cooperation from the energy and resources sector to investment, infrastructure, high-tech, finance, and other areas. And from trading goods to joint R&D and joint production so as to elevate the, re the result-oriented cooperation between the two countries. Third, stay firmly committed to cementing the friendship between the two peoples. Amity between peoples holds the key to relations between countries. It is the people's deep friendship that drives state-to-state -state relations forward. Here, I want to share a couple of stories about the mutual support and mutual help between our peoples. During the War of Resistance Against Japanese Aggression, Captain Gregory Kurashenko of the Air Force of the Soviet Union came to China and fought side by side with the Chinese people. He once said, I feel the Chinese people's sufferings as if I were feeling the sufferings of my own motherland. He died heroically on Chinese soil. The Chinese people never forget this hero. An ordinary Chinese mother and her son have kept vigil at his tomb for more than half a century. In 2004, China invited some of the children traumatized in the Beslan school hostage incident to China for rehabilitation treatment. Footnote 2. This refers to a terrorist attack 
at school number one in the town of Beslan, North Ossetia, an autonomous republic in the North Caucasus region of the Russian Federation on September 1st, 2004, resulting in more than 300 deaths. End of footnote 2. The children received meticulous care. The head doctor from the Russian side said to the Chinese side, Your doctors have given our children such great help, and they will always remember you. When Win Chuan was hit by a devastating earthquake in 2008, Russia raced against time to extend a helping hand and invited the children from disaster areas to Russia's far east for rehabilitation. Footnote 3. The earthquake, registering 8.0 on the Richter scale, occurred at 1428.04, China Standard Time, on May 12, 2008, in Winchuan County, Sichuan Province. The epicenter was located 38 degrees southwest of and 11 kilometers away from Yingxiu Town. As of September 25th, 2008, official figures stated that 69,227 were confirmed dead, 374,643 injured, and 17,923 missing. The direct economic loss in the hardest hit areas reached Renminbi, Eight hundred and forty five point one billion. End of footnote three. Three years ago, I saw with my own eyes at the Ocean Children's Center in Vladivostok the loving care Russian teachers showered on our children. As we Chinese often say, Love knows no borders. These Chinese children have learned for themselves the love, friendship, and kindness of the Russian people. There are many more touching stories like these, and together they keep the tree of our friendship nourished, strong, and evergreen. Russia and China each has a time-honored history and splendid culture, and cultural exchanges between us play an irreplaceable role in advancing the friendship between the two peoples. Ancient Chinese philosophers such as Confucius and Lao Tzu are well known in Russia, while Russian culture left a deep mark on the older generations of Chinese revolutionaries. Even people of my age have read many Russian classic masterpieces. In my youth, I read the works of such Russian literary giants as Pushkin, Lermontov, Turgenev, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, and Chekhov, and savored the powerful charm of Russian literature. It is no wonder that cultural exchanges between Russia and China enjoy fertile ground. The youth are the future of a country and the future of the world. They also hold in their hands the future of China-Russia friendship. During this visit of mine, President Putin and I jointly announced that China and Russia would host the Year of Youth Friendship and Exchanges in 2014 and 2015, respectively. On the Chinese side, we will invite a delegation of Russian university students, including students of the Moscow State Institute of International Relations, to China. 
I see in you some of the best and brightest of the young generation in Russia. I hope that more and more young people from both countries will take over the baton of China-Russia friendship by actively involving themselves in the cause of friendship. Dear faculty members and students, as a Russian proverb goes, big ships sail far. We also have lines of an ancient poem which read, forging ahead like a gigantic ship breaking through strong winds and heavy waves, I'll set my towering sail to cross the sea which raves. Footnote 4. See note 3, page 39. End of footnote 4. I am convinced that with the joint efforts of the governments and peoples of our two countries, China-Russia relations will continue to press ahead overcoming difficulties, bringing greater benefits to the two peoples, and making ever greater contributions to global peace and development. Thank you. Build a new model of major country relationship between China and the United States. June seventh, two 2013 Main points of the speech when meeting the press with U.S. President Barack Obama. President Obama and I have just had our first meeting. We had a candid and in-depth exchange of views on our respective domestic and foreign policies on building a new model of major country relationship between China and the United States, and on major international and regional issues of mutual concern. We have reached a consensus on many important issues. I told President Obama explicitly that China will unswervingly follow the path of peaceful development, further its reform and opening up, strive to realize the Chinese dream of the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, and promote the noble cause of peace and development of mankind. The Chinese dream is about making our country prosperous and strong revitalizing the nation, and bringing a happy life to its people. It is a dream of peace, development, cooperation, and mutual benefit. It has many things in common with all the beautiful dreams, including the American dream of people all over the world. President Obama and I both maintain that China and the U.S., should and can build a new model of relationship different from the historical clashes and confrontations between major powers. Given the rapid economic globalization and the need for all countries in the world to work together, we both agreed to make joint efforts to build a new model of major country relationship, respect each other, cooperate, and seek mutual interests, and bring benefits to our people and the people of the world at large. The world community also expects a continuously improved and expanded China-U.S. relationship. Good China-U.S. cooperation will serve as an anchor for global stability and bolster and a booster for world peace. The two sides agreed to enhance dialogues and communication at all levels and constantly increase mutual trust and understanding. President Obama and I will keep in close touch with each other through exchanges of visits, meetings, telephone conversations, and letters. 
I have extended an invitation to President Obama to visit China at a suitable time for a new round of meetings and realize an exchange of visits as soon as possible. The two sides will act in close coordination to make sure that the new round of China-U.S. strategic and economic dialogues and high-level consultations on cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges will achieve positive results. The Chinese Defense Minister and Foreign Minister will visit the U.S. on invitation. The two sides also agreed to enhance cooperation in a wide range of areas such as economy, trade, energy, environment, and cultural, culture and humanities, as well as cooperation among different regions, so as to expand the converging interests between the two countries in an all-round way. We will improve and develop bilateral military relations and build a new model of China-U.S. military relationship. We will strengthen coordination concerning macroeconomic policies, expand cooperation in the process of our economic development, and promote robust, sustainable, and balanced economic growth in the Asia-Pacific region and the world at large. Where there is a will, there is a way. I am confident about the new model of major country relationship between China and the U.S. First, both sides have the political will to build such a relationship. Second, bilateral cooperation between the two countries over the past more than 40 years has laid a solid foundation for our future cooperation. Third, the two sides have established more than 90 mechanisms for high-level dialogues on strategy, economy, culture, and humanities, which serve as guarantee mechanisms for the building of the new model of major country relationship. Fourth, sister provinces and states and sister cities, totaling more than 220 pairs, have been established between the two sides. Nearly 190,000 Chinese students are studying in the U.S., and more than 20,000 U.S. students are studying in China. A good public opinion foundation for the building of the new model relationship. Fifth, there is broad scope for future bilateral cooperation. The building of a new model of major country relationship between China and the U.S. is unprecedented, but it will be faithfully carried out by the two sides. China and the U.S. should work together to push forward the new model of major country relationship by increasing dialogues, promoting mutual trust, expanding cooperation, and controlling disputes. Both the Chinese and American nations are great nations, and both peoples are great peoples. I believe that, with determination, confidence, patience, and wisdom, the two sides will accomplish our goals as long as we keep the overall situation in mind while starting with the daily routine and making constant progress. China has been a victim of computer hacker attacks. As a defender of cybersecurity, China has the same concerns as the U.S. in this field. The two sides have decided, through consultations, to establish a cybersecurity working team within the framework of China-U.S. strategic and security dialogues, and to start to work on the issue as soon as possible. The two sides should eschew mi mistrust and engage in cooperation so as to make cybersecurity a new bright spot in China-U.S. cooperation.